Hey guys, hope you're well. Today going to go over a AI voice assistant for brainstorming and planning that I built with full access to, uh, to Notion. So this agent can create, update, archive tasks within my Notion system, can create and update notes and do brainstorming sessions, which is something that I've been doing quite a lot, to be honest. It has internet access, so it's also able to research topics and kind of verify information or kind of pull in information in, into its context. And you could also do things like plug in, you know, Gmail or Google Calendar or l like literally any MCP server can actually be plugged in there. The reason that I built this is because I do a lot of walking and for like planning or just like kind of shaping ideas, you know, it could be about a business, it could be about investments, it could be about YouTube. Sometimes I'll just listen to a book and mull over it walking around. But more recently, I've spent a lot of time doing calls whilst I'm on these walks, particularly doing calls with GPT. I've tried all of them and GPT tends to be my go-to. It's very good, particularly that it has all context on you from all of your previous chats, which I do find to be very useful in personalization, but it does have a number of issues. Number one, GPT in call mode is GPT 4.0, which is now, a, like now we're on like GPT 5.1, which of course is much better. But the main issue being that it loses all context. If you're doing like longer calls, like I'll speak for, to, to GPT sometimes for hours, but in most cases for about 40 minutes to, to an hour. On, on these walks um, because the transcripts are, are so long so it doesn't save the transcription it just says like you know audio transcription but it doesn't actually have any details which means that information is completely lost so in order to and and one other thing as well is that it, you can actually connect different tools within GPT but for Notion it doesn't work well at all it kept timing out for me so I decided to build this myself now I'll walk you through what we have here. By the way, it's all built with 11 labs. 11 labs have built this 11 labs agent platform that at least I haven't seen anyone talking about, but I personally think it's really great. So this is all built with 11 labs components and it's 11 labs running on the back end, doing all of the audio transcription and also creating the audio. And the, the actual model itself running is 5.1, but GPT 5.1, but you can pick any model that you want. So. This can also be turned into like a mobile app or I can deploy as a web app very easily. Okay, so if we come in here connecting, uh, hi GPT, can we do a brainstorming session on how to achieve complete life freedom? Love that topic. Yes, let us do it. When you say complete life freedom, do you mean mostly time and location freedom, financial freedom or more inner freedom and psychology stuff? Also, should we treat this as a brand new note in Notion for a fresh deep dive or continue an existing session you already have? Please, can we create a new note in Notion and it will be on time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom, freedom from authority. Nice. I will spin up a fresh outline for this freedom note now. Nice mix of freedoms. That gives us a clear shape. To ground this, describe your perfectly normal free day. Not a whole... So like you, you get the idea, but basically I would run through this. I can speak for like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. And it, the other very important thing is it doesn't wait for the end of the conversation to add everything into the notion note as we are having the conversation. It's constantly making tools to that same notion note to kind of build out a document or summary of the call. Now, this is, I think, such an interesting area because these things are so easy to build. I'll go through some of them in a minute. Like in terms of other examples that I've built, I also developed a language teacher because I'm currently trying to learn Russian, a speech improver. So you may have noticed in my videos, I tend to say R a lot. Uh, and you could even just add in a single prompt, for example, in this one and just say, also correct my speech if ever I say um or are, uh, or keep a count of how many times I do it and give that to me as feedback. You can also ask it to like improve your phrasing or give you suggestions on your communication. And again, it all works in real time. On the language thing as well, by the way, this currently works in, I think, 70 different languages is what 11 labs are able to do. So you could, again, you could release a SAS as like a, um, 
you know, a language coach or whatever it is. And I'll go on to a few more ideas like that in a minute, but just to get you started on like how you can actually do this. There's two ways to do it. The more simple one is probably this. So you can go to 11.ai and it's going to walk you through like a really, I'll walk through the process, create new agent, pick a voice for your agent. Yeah, and it's going to bring you into this. And then you can just do add your first integration. You can add Google Calendar, Linear, which I have another agent that I use for managing software, uh, some of our software projects, uh, and it will write up Linear and GitHub issues that I then just pass directly over to the AI agent. So again, I can be out walking, talk about some of the features that I want. We then turn those into tasks, in, into GitHub issues with requirements, acceptance criteria, what needs to be done, what tests need to be passed and so on. This will all get written up, put into Linear, which automatically syncs over to github and then it can be given to ai agents to start working on whilst i'm walking on a beach somewhere so these are just really interesting workflows notion although the notion integration here i found didn't work very well so i'm currently not using this but this is their like kind of non-techy way of setting it up and they do have a mobile app so this is 11.ai but if you want the full experience you would come into 11 labs and instead of the creative platform you come into the agents platform and this is the example of, of the one that i showed you so you come into agent here you have the prompt you can choose the model that you want to use so gpt 5 5.1 like i have mine i think on medium yeah, medium reasoning. But if you wanted much faster replies, like you may have noticed that it took a couple of, of seconds to actually reply to me, you can do these faster models like Gemini 2.5 Flash or even GPT Nano or Mini. They're going to be much faster, but I prefer to work with a smarter model and I'm happy to have the trade-off of having a, a bit of a delay in the responses in order to get much better answers. You could also do high reasoning as well, but I don't find that there's too much of a difference in terms of the quality. But again, that's just my own experience. Here, I turn the temperature down a lot. If you have it as more expressive, I find that the answers it gives you are much longer, whereas I don't like that because I find that it interrupts my kind of trail of thought. So I want it to be very precise and very succinct. You'll also find that that's kind of written in my prompting here as well. Keep the answers very short in order to keep the conversation flowing. So yeah, you can put in the system prompt. And again, I could literally just replace this with like, you are an AI nutrition health coaching expert, like a fat loss expert. You basically could launch a new SaaS just by doing that. Then you have workflows. I haven't actually played around with these. They seem kind of simple, but basically you give a conversation goal and you can create different sub agents. So you could start off the agent with a much faster model in order to get replies much quicker. And then if I say I want to do a brainstorming session, it would hand over to a smarter model, for example, like GPT 5.1 on high reasoning. So you could have multiple different sub agents that it kind of hands off to, and each of them would have a, a specific goal and their own knowledge base. So this is quite interesting. It's just not something that I've played around with. This is like a brainstorming agent, as I mentioned, that I use for like running through ideas. And uh, like now, because I, I'm trying to get back into the habit of creating YouTube videos. The reason that I made this was for brainstorming YouTube videos, for kind of shaping out different ideas for videos that I have and crafting together potential scripts. So I gave it access to my YouTube channel just as a link so that it can scrape that and it understands what I normally talk about. And then I had GPT write up a document here, which is like the style of my videos that I, I like to make videos based off of my own real world experiences talking about automation, about leverage, about being clever, about thinking in systems and kind of different approaches to business. So it understands all of that context, which also makes a massive difference as well. I did have a few other ideas. I'm not releasing any of these. They're just kind of fun, personal side projects for me. But I think that there's so much value in what you could build on this platform. I found a guy that was doing about 500K per month on a anti-masturbation app for like blocking pornography basically, which would be a complete career turn for me, at least considering what I was working on for the past few years. One idea that I had there was you could like scrape the whole of Reddit. There's some particular subreddits called like NoFap, which is like anti-masturbation subreddits. And you could take the most upvoted content in there, the most upvoted comments, most upvoted threads, pull them all together in a knowledge base and train your large language model here on what was working for other people, be it motivational kind of content in order for people who are trying to quit pornography, for example, would be able to call this assistant and 
it would be fully trained on what had worked for other people. But you could, you could apply that to anything, like health and fitness, nutrition, any form of coaching, I think this is really interesting for. Now, the thing that you'll probably be thinking to that as well is like, that it, they actually need to open the app and start the call in order to get this value. But actually, you can plug in here if you come down to phone number, you can connect via Twilio. Twilio is an SMS and calling API. You can actually give this a phone number. So it will have a US phone number. And if someone hasn't checked in, for example, like if you're a nutrition coaching app and someone hasn't checked in and sent their macros in for a day, you could set this to automatically go and call them and the AI agent would speak to them. So it can actually proactively nudge them, which I think is so interesting. And again, just really changes, changes how we interface with these things whereas normally I need to be the proactive person to kind of open the app and engage with it now that has completely changed and if you think about a lot of coaching particularly in like the health gym and training and things like that a lot of it is down to the accountability side of things is going to be a lot of the value that people receive out of these services but now with this by giving it a phone number and being able to text people, you don't even need to tell it's an AI. I mean, that kind of depends on your point of view, but I would actually think that given the quality of the voice in these models, a lot of people would have no idea. And they would think that they're being chased up by a person telling them to, it could be like a life coaching thing related to specific goals, to specific tasks. I could even train this on all of my YouTube videos that I've ever made. The one reason I probably wouldn't do that is because my opinions have changed quite a lot compared to a lot of the things that I was talking about two years ago. But still very, very interesting nonetheless. Then under analysis, you can also go and analyze all of the calls as well to kind of use this for training. And then in tools, this is where you actually give it like the features. So these are where I give access to Notion and the ability to add tasks. It can also list recent conversations, which helps to give context about things that have been spoken about already. Again, this instead of needing to like repeat myself about things, I want it to be able to pull information, just kind of summaries from our like pre previous conversations. And it, it makes the model seem like much more intelligent. Otherwise, if it's starting with like a blank memory every single time, you find that you, that you repeat yourself quite a lot. And this is just basically it appending its own things to Notion. I also have Firecrawl integrated. If you don't know Firecrawl, it's a searching tool specifically designed for LLMs. So I could say like top 10 podcasts on life freedom and it will go and pull in that information and the ai will have access to it as well you can also connect mcp servers i think most of you should be familiar with mcp servers by now essentially it's a protocol for giving to llms to be able to interact with different tools similar to like well it's, it is actually api based but just for llms to be able to understand and interact with things so i could connect for example Airtable over MCP and say, can you go and look over and find our best, our top 10 performing Instagram accounts from our Reels reposting farm, as an example. And you can see some that I, like GitHub was one that I connected as well. I think that they also had some, yeah, here, maybe some pre-built integrations that you can connect as well. So yeah, custom MCP server, Cursor. So you could actually launch Cursor agents. Again, just on a call, you can be out and about walking. HubSpot as a CRM, Zendesk, Parallel, Salesforce. They, they do seem to be like quite actively developing this agent side of things as well. And then in terms of like getting this on your website, you can literally just copy the script and put it on there. You can like change some, some of the settings here. So it's really easy to integrate. All in all, by the way, I should say, I actually haven't built this at all through the UI. This was just for me to like walk through for anyone who's kind of non-technical. My app is completely vibe coded because they have an API for the agents platform. So you don't even need to go through and do any of this. You can just go through and vibe code the entire thing. And like in total, it took about three hours in order to build this. Again, I literally just built it yesterday just as like a fun little side project. It's built with Claude Opus 4.5, which is currently my go-to model for programming. But we're in such an interesting time with all of these models coming out and these really powerful, very well-funded companies all in competition with each other, trying to acquire market share, that Gemini 3 came out, really great model. I do also use it a lot as well. Then 5.1 and 5.1 Codex came out the next day. And then about a week later, we've got Opus 4.5. So a lot of new tools for me to be able to play with. In terms of what I'm working on right now, um, my life setup is 
I would say that I have actually now achieved like complete life freedom and I'll make a video on that as well not just in terms of like financial freedom location freedom time freedom but also like commitment freedom I've really sorted out that area of my life as well and freedom from authority so they're like the kind of five different pillars of freedom that I've kind of come up with myself of just a kind of like philosophy a, a way of living my life that I found to work really well for me but currently most of my time is spent just following my passions if I wake up in the morning I either go for a walk or I, I work on something that I feel inspired to work on generally like a smaller little side project something like this there, there's so many interesting tools like you know people would say the phrase like keeping up with AI is like a full-time job with all these developments and changes and I've, I've just kind of made it my full-time job to do that because I'm, I f find it very interesting. The other like, big changes that I think we're going to see is how the changes in how we interface with AI. And I really feel that this is one of them. So we're seeing Meta and people looking at wearables and kind of AI glasses. And I do think that they are interesting. There's also startups like Cluely, which give access to your like browser screen so that the AI has context of what you're doing. And obviously with AI glasses, it's got a camera. So it has like a real time feed of what you're doing at all times. But even now, just the simple thing of like putting in your AirPods and building out these like AI agents and just having access to these tools and being able to interface with them hands free in a different way as a project manager, as a life coach, as a notion assistant, as a brainstorming agent. There's hundreds of different things that, that you could do. You could plug in books into it and literally have calls with the books rather than needing to read them. There's just I infinite things that you could do. You could train on your favorite influencer or whatever you want to call it like Naval Ravikant for example you could just upload transcripts of all of his YouTube videos and podcasts and do direct calls with him to get advice on your personal life situation you could do the same thing for investing data download all the information Warren Buffett has ever put out and have calls with an AI version trained on Warren Buffett's interviews and thinking processes so many different ways of doing this and to be honest i'm surprised that this 11 labs this agents platform hasn't picked up more traction than it has the only reason i think it may not have is because you have to pay for it on na10 for example i know that a lot of guys are building out these kind of telegram bots i just think this is such a far superior way of interfacing with ai yeah I think that is, that's everything from me. I will get back into making more videos as well. I hope that was useful. Any questions, if you've built anything similar or have ideas or things like that, as always, feel free to leave a comment.